Okay, next let's talk about protocol components. Some things that go into protocols that help facilitate this communication. Some of the rules that they work, that, that they use, and some of the components that help make communication successful. So we're gonna get a little more into the technical side of this. It's not deep into the technical side of it, but it gives you an understanding uh, that we're gonna build off of for concepts later on in the course. So one thing a protocol has to do is it has to encode and decode. When, it, when information is being transferred from point A to point B, it could be going through lots of different technologies and lots of different stages and hitting all sorts of things along the way. And one job of a protocol it is, is it needs to encode that and get it ready for the next stage and as it progresses along and moves along its path. And so I'm gonna use the example of the telegraph once again because what's happening is that I have words that I want to portray to the other side or transfer to the other side or, or uh, send to the other side. And so what I have to do is I have to encode my words into physical movement, which would be the tapping of the button, and that then encodes it by putting the physical or the uh, pulses onto the wire, the electrical pulses onto the wider wire. And then once it gets to the other side, it must be decoded and it sends it, turns it into a sound on the other side. And then from sound, it's got to be decoded into words. And so there are multiple steps in here where we're encoding and decoding, or we're moving it from a uh, one media to the next media. So the next thing that a protocol must do is it has to have some sort of formatting or encapsulation to it. And so what I mean by that, we're gonna take a look at some data here. I wanna transfer a data from one location to the next, but where is it going? How is it going to get there? How are, how are we going to verify that it's correct on the other side? I have to send some information with it. So how do we send information along with the data? Well, we do that through a encapsulation. So what we might do is we might put a header at the beginning of this that includes some information like where it's going to go, what it, the payload or what the data is consists of, so it can get to the other side and it knows what to do with that data. There also is a trailer on the end, and so sometimes we'll add a trailer with some additional information as well. So this is how protocols will send information, is they'll encapsulate that data with, as they send it over. So another thing that protocols must do is somehow they have to get the information from one side to the next, from point A to point B. And so here I have two computers here. They both have addresses on them. These are IP addresses. It's not the only form of addressing. In fact, there's lots of different ways that uh, happen as you're communicating from point A to point B, a lot of different type of addressing that happens. So we'll talk about those different, different types of addressings that happen. But here we have a computer a is talking to computer B here and it has to send the information over there so it's using IP addresses to get the information over to that laptop there on the other side. So usually within the protocols you'll also find message size. So when you're communicating from one location to another, there's got to be an understanding of how big the message is. And so that's another thing that get, gets conveyed through these protocols. So another thing that we'll find within uh, our protocols is segmentation. So what the problem is, is, is if you are downloading a big file and the rest of the internet has to be shut down until you download your file, that would not work out right. And so what we have to do is we have to break bigger uh, messages down into smaller components and send them in smaller components so that way other communication can happen at the same time. That's called segmentation. So segmentation is just breaking down a big message into much smaller segments and sending it over to the other side. Because we're sending smaller packets to the other side, we need to somehow let the other side know how it's supposed to be reassembled. So we need to do some sort of sequencing to this. We need to start saying that this is one, two, three, four. So that way when it arrives to the other side, it knows how to reassemble that data and put it together and interpret that data. 
For that communication to happen, we also need to set up a connection and then take the connection back down. And so what will happen is as we start that data, that what the first information that comes across will say, hey, I'm gonna be communicating to you. We need to establish this connection. And then we transfer the data over and then we need to break down that connection or we, we end that communication with that other side. So another thing that's built into these, these protocols is error detection. And so what happens when this data is being transferred, things need to heal themselves. And so sometimes there'll be packets that don't get to the other side. Sometimes the packet will get to the other side, but it will be corrupted and that data will be corrupted. And so then that causes problems. And so how does this computer know what is what is accurate, what's not accurate, what needs to be resent. And so the there's some sort of error detection that's involved in these different protocols. So another function that happens within protocols is called flow control. And so what flow control is, is it establishes a flow of data from point A to point B. So what can happen is obviously we want data to flow as quickly as it can. And so a sending computer could possibly be sending data really fast. But if there is some sort of point along the way that data gets stacked up, that's no good. Because once that device starts getting overwhelmed, it's going to start dropping some of that information and it's not going to get to its destination. And so somehow we need to establish a flow control of how we can get data to the other side in a reasonable amount of time, but at the same time, don't overload any one point along the way. So another thing that protocols will do is establish priorities, priorities in which things need to go at a little faster pace. For instance, we have several packets that are going from point A to point B, well, perhaps one of these is some sort of voice or video. And we know that if voice or video doesn't get to the other side in a timely manner, then it's useless. There, that needs to come in a certain uh, pattern or a certain um, cadence. And so we have a quality of service that needs to be established for these more priority packets that are being sent across here. And so priority, is for those different packets will be flagged somewhere within the protocols. Message options is another way that protocols will relay information from one point to another. There are times when within the protocols it needs to establish certain criteria or certain, uh, you know, for instance, when you're communicating back and forth a certain set of rules. And so it will use different flags to flag different message options. We'll go much more in depth into message options as we get into the different protocols. Okay, let's look at one more before we move on. Hey, do you like my videos? If you do, please hit that like button because it really helps me out. And so the last one we'll look at here is response timeout. And so with response timeout, we have two computers that we're communicating back and forth. But let's say this computer goes offline or maybe there's a device that goes offline in between, some sort of link goes down, something happens. They were in the middle of communication, they already had established a connection, yet one of the devices just suddenly stops responding. And so this device is waiting for that response. At some point in time, it needs to say, I'm going to give up. And so we call that a response timeout. At the time, point in time that's going to be agreed on that we're not going to continue with this, this open connection and we're going to close the connection. So these are just some of the components that are within uh, a lot of the protocols that we're going to talk about. We're going to get much more in depth into these different concepts, but it's a, good, uh, it's a good idea to have a basic understanding of these components that protocols have. That So when we get into the different protocols, there's a basic understanding that we can go into and analyze those protocols and what they do and how they operate.